You're listening to Behind the Wheels with Doug Mason, Dave Walters, and Mike Yeagley. This is a show where we talk about heavy truck and medium-duty axolands. Doug, Dave, and Mike bring close to 100 years of experience and expertise in the transportation business. Join us once a month to learn new things about axolands. Sponsored by Alcoa Wheels, the global leader in aluminum wheel innovation. Welcome to another episode of Behind the Wheels. I'm Mike Yeagley. I'm Dave Walters. And I'm Doug Mason. So we've spent a couple of, uh, couple of episodes talking a little bit about holding things together. Uh, this, this next episode is going to be about the CVSA out-of-service condition, which is a huge issue for the industry. And a, there's a lot, of, a lot of misunderstanding about what a CVSA out-of-service condition is. And so we'll, we'll, we'll spend this episode, next half hour or so, walking through that and explain that to you. Uh, Dave, you want to kick off and tell us a little bit about CVSA? Yes, I, I certainly will. I'm actually a member of CVSA, and they have, uh, you know, they have two meetings every year. They have uh, meetings where we all come together, um, vendors, uh, the officers, the inspections, the fleets, and we discuss about what is a violation, what's not a violation. And violations are so different than the actual out-of-service criteria, and we're going to talk a lot about those later. Um, the key is at CVSA is we come together to try to keep the safety of the roads together. Um, you know, CVSA are mostly, it's, it's state by state. So this state might have these violations. Out-of-service criteria is everybody. Everybody agrees on out-of-service. So if they red tag your truck, that means, hey, they all agree on these are things that should be. So violations are different. So everybody will say, well, I got, you know, red tag. Well, did they put the sticker on your truck and say it cannot be moved till it repaired? No, that's a violation. So there are differences. But uh, CVSA is an organization that everybody talks about. And what are most of them? Most of them are state police officers. And what they do is at the end of their career, and this is just generalizing, they they take this CVSA job because it's kind of a daylight shift all the time. Uh, you know, yes, you may have to crawl under trucks and measure, you know, brake cambers and stuff like that. But, uh, you know, they're mostly state police officers that chose to do that. There are some of them that have not. Well, and uh, it makes sense. I mean, if you're going to have an organization, what, what the, uh, let, let's take a step back here. CVSA, what does that stand for? Uh, Commercial Vehicle Safety Association. And that's, that's a group of, like you mentioned, it's industry folks, it's, it's regulatory folks, it's, it's, the, Fleet. it's the fleets. So all of them coming together and talking about what is, what is safe. And, and what is most critically safe. And so that's where the CVSA is all about. Um, and there's, there's more to just out-of-service conditions, though, and, and these violations. Yes. Is You get a score, right? Isn't there a score that's associated with it? Yeah. And that can have uh, a big impact on a you fleet? Know, when the federal government went to what they call CSA, you know, CSA is controlled by, by your driver, your CDL drivers. It's controlled by these safety inspections. It's controlled by accidents. I mean, they score your company now, and if you get too many points, the federal government can put you basically on, they can shut you down. I mean, there has been trucking companies shut down because they get too many CSA points. Unsafe practices, basically. Unsafe practices, and it can be with your drivers, can be with your equipment, it can be accidents. So, you know, why is it so important to pass the, CS, you know, the, the CVSA inspections. Well, one is how much time, like, they take. They give you a little sticker if you pass. Three it, months, right? Three months. Yeah, three months, yeah. And so for three months, you don't get inspected again. But every time that a truck stops and they do one of these inspections, you're losing time because your truck's sitting there. So, you know, it's very important, but the CSA scores are gigantic in our industry. And everybody say it, it, it affects your insurance rates. Yeah, it affects say. so many things. And so you got to have safe drivers, safe equipment, you know, accident-free. Uh, the insurance companies look at that. 
I mean, it, it's it has really become a focal point of the industry. Um, you know, the the one fleet maintenance director said, "Hey." If you don't keep in mind CSA scores, you're not going to be employed very long in this industry. So let's take a little bit of time. We've, we've talked a little bit about the CVSA out of service, and you mentioned red tagging. And, and uh, that's, that's when you get an out of service notice where your vehicle has been red tagged. It won't be allowed to move until you fix whatever it is that, that they've found. Um, what, now, what is it that drives a red? Is there like a standard that, that you hear and when, when you're at those meetings and they're, what are they looking for that, to determine whether something's going to be a red tag or not? Yeah, before you get into that, I think we need to, again, focus on how important. Some people might be out there thinking, well, you know, I've never had any issue with this. And really, how big of a deal is it? I drive for a, a safe company. Or things go well. We do our pre-trip inspections and we really shouldn't have any concern. Uh, to show how important this is, CVSA has a, I'll call it a blitz every year, and they do a, a three-day uh, event uh, throughout Canada and the United States. And just as an example, from last year in, in June of 2019, they looked at about 68,000 vehicles over those three days. And out of that, there were 18% of the vehicles that were put out of service. Red they tagged. couldn't. They were red they, tagged. They, were red they tagged. could not drive them. 18%. I mean, if that's a, a cross-section of the country, there's a lot of people out there that really should take note at how they are maintaining their vehicle or their driver records, because there's more things, obviously, that can put you out of service than just your truck. So it's, it's a big deal. And the other thing behind that is our show, we're talking about you know, tires and wheels primarily here, and wheel ends. Of those uh, 18% that were put out of service, the top three were brake systems at 28%. Tire and wheels at 19%, and brake adjusters, just brake adjusters by themselves, 17%. So over 55% of all the vehicles put out of service were because of brakes, tires, or wheels. That's, that's, that's a big deal. So let's talk a little bit. When the, when, when they, for that 18%, the, 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 the 18% of, wheel, of, of vehicles that were pulled over and red tagged, what, what is the standard that they're looking at there? Well, it's, it's really, you know, I'll start with wheels, any crack that is three inches longer, you know, three inches or longer. So I, th I think they call that an imminent failure. Th that, that would be an imminent failure. In yeah, other I words, see. any crack over three inches, they're basically saying that that should be addressed at that time. So that's a red tag. That's, that's past the violation. So, so an imminent failure. Yeah, and just as it's defined by them, it would be likely to cause a crash or a breakdown. It's really what they're looking for. They consider it a safety concern. That's, the, again, the difference between a violation and an out of service. It could likely to cause a crash or breakdown would be the terminology they would use. So there's really, there's, there's several levels here that uh, I'm going to, we're going to try and untangle this because we're, we, we have, first of all, in, uh, we have on the state level, they have violations. And so you can have all sorts of different violations, not enough threads showing, you know, you, you don't have enough yeah. thread engagement. You still drive. Yeah, you, you still you know, finish, and finish some, your load. Some, thread, some states are looking for two threads. Some states are looking for one thread. Some, you know, there, there's going to be different, different rules on, on certain things, and those are the violations, and those are going to be state by state. And then you have these red tag situations, uh, the CVSA out of service, and everybody agrees on those things. And the, 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 the red tags are those things that are likely to cause a crash or a breakdown. There's another level that um, I think we need to sort of fold into this discussion, and that's manufacturer's recommendations. And so like if you go and you, you download, you go online, and you go to any wheel manufacturer's website and you download their manufacturer, the, the, manufa the wheel manufacturers or the tire manufacturers uh, guidelines for safety uh, for their service recommendation, the service stuff, manuals. Yep. And that's going to be another level of, of recommendations. That's going to be uh, a, a, what we would, the, you know, as, as industry experts, that's where we would draw the line. So, and we'll be talking about at least those two will be talking about where the where the industry stands where you know from from uh, manufacturers recommendations when we go through this 
And then we'll also be talking about the CVSA. And you'll be able to see, I think, as we go through this, you know, uh, the difference between those two. And, and really, and maybe we can get into a little bit of a discussion on, on you, know, you know, and I think they're very serious when they say this is likely to cause a crash or a breakdown. I think that's, that's a, a really good way to put it because if I, you, you mentioned, Dave, a three-inch crack, you know, that is way more than uh, like Alcoa wheels would advocate for it. Yeah, we'd know. recommend, obviously, we'll talk about it more, but if you see any crack in the wheel, then you should take it out of service. Yes. And again, you know, it's very difficult to understand that at CVSA, what happens is these fleets that get these tickets are violations. <laughs> Red tags, you really can't argue. Violations, you can. So you can appeal them. And so our two meetings of the year is literally sitting in a room looking at hundreds of violations and giving our opinions, is that a violation or is that not a violation and oh, so, why? And so the fleets of, are coming in yeah, and they're pleading their case. They're pleading their case. And then we're sitting there as vendors saying, that's not that bad, and the, the inspectors are saying, this is what I got, and then they can say, well, in my state, that's not, and this is what we do. So, I mean, it's meetings to try to make this system better because it is a touchy subject, especially when you throw in the CSA scores, which are critical to our industry. I mean, they really are. Safety violations on your equipment, on your drivers, accidents, you know, your insurance rates, all this matters now. And it used to not, but it does now. So, and, I, and, and that's a good thing for the overall industry because it, 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 it's always good for us to be safe as an industry. Yeah. And most of the industry, you know, I, I am so privileged to, you know, work with like TMC where the, you have great fleets that, that, that this is not a big issue because they go a step above. But there are many other fleets out there that are not a step above. And safety criteria, we all want to drive down the highway without having issues. And this is what they're about. So, you know, they're a needed group of people, and we try to work through all the issues to make it even better. So when we start talking about out-of-service criteria and red tags, like, you know, the next one would be, you know, any two holes. So like from a bolt hole to a hand hole, if you got a crack that extends to any two holes in the wheel, that's out of service. That truck is going to be red tagged. I mean, if you have so, a... So that so I'm just going to ask, you know, so you're looking at a wheel. You've got, let's say, a, a typical wheel on a, on a Class 8 truck is going to have 10 hand holes and 10 bolt holes. And so if you have a crack that propagates from one handhold to another, well, that's going to be over three inches anyway. Or if you have one that goes from bolt hole to bolt hole, then that then that's, again, even if it's not three inches, you're still talking about out of service. And so that's, you know, and then we have, is there uh, anything yeah, else? Yeah, like uh, two more cracks on any wheel is a red tag. That's so, an out of service. Yeah, and you'll see that sometimes, right? We'll see, we'll see where a crack will start on one side. Imagine a handhole. Uh, which is the the vent hole in, in automotive <laughs> automotive world they call that a vent hole. But when you when you look at the wheel and you have that that hand hole there on the wheel, and you'll sometimes see a crack grow on the at the two o'clock uh, position on that hand hole, and then you'll also see a second one growing on the ten o'clock position on that hand hole. And now you've got a problem. Now I mean, having a small crack on one side from a manufacturer's standpoint, any crack is get that thing out of service. You know, that it's time to, you know, now cracks tend to, uh, especially on aluminum wheels, ten, cracks tend to propagate pretty slowly, but you need to get, you know, once you see them, you need yeah. to get them out. Yeah, I mean, because obviously any load-bearing section is designed with a certain cross-section. Right. And if you start to put a crack into that cross-section, obviously it's going to be weaker than it was originally designed so that we'll continue to propagate that crack. And that's why we would want you to inspect and take that out of service as soon as it is seen. And what that, that three-inch criteria is telling you is that this is a crack that has, been, that has gone unnoticed for way too long. And so that's not just, if, if I was an inspector, uh, I, would, I would be looking at that and I would say, well, this is not just telling me that they have a crack. It tells me they have a crack and they're not 
they're not looking at it very right, often. Right. And so that's that that's part of the reason it gets bumped up to another level of this red tagging. Now, one of the criteria is that we probably get a lot about welding on any wheel. Now, steel wheels are allowed to be welded from the manufacturers where they weld the disc into the into the the rim. The drop center or but that's only when the manufacturer that, does only it. Only when the manufacturer. So every time these guys will come in and say, "Well, I'm allowed to weld steel wheels." No, you're not allowed to weld <laughs> weld steel wheels. A manufacturer is allowed to put a weld in the steel wheel to put theirs. So being an aluminum wheel manufacturer, as Alcoa wheels are, we are allowed to basically say you're never allowed to weld on our wheels because it is a CVSA out of service. And that means it is not going to move. Yeah, just as another note on that, welding on an aluminum wheel, our wheels are, you know, we don't get into another episode, they're heat treatable, <laughs> ageable. And so when you put heat into it, you're changing the properties of that wheel. And we talked about wheels that get heated up on a previous show, and it would be the same instance. When you're, when you're welding on an aluminum wheel, you're going to change the properties that were intended for the wheel and reduce the strength of the wheel overall as well. So, you know, welding is, a, you know, like you mentioned, you know, well, and what the CVSA says is any uh, welds, any cracks in welds attaching a disc wheel to the rim, that's going to be a steel wheel thing. Mm -hmm. um, and if there's a crack in that weld, that's what they're going to be looking for. Uh, any crack in welds attaching the tubeless demountable rim to the adapter, that you don't see so much anymore. There's not a lot of demountable rims out no. on the road anymore. But if, if that's, if you see still the, there, if, it's still there, still there, still there. Um, and then the number three one that they, that they list here is any welded repair on an aluminum wheel on the steering axle which I'm sort of surprised that they, they specify the steering axle there. Again, it's, 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 you got to realize steer axles are treated differently in our industry. And, and as a vendor, that's hard to say. But as an industry, it is treated differently. So, like, when you go to these major fleets, if they have no crack wheels on steer axles and, and – all that they feel a lot more comfortable where duels are kind of accepted, and so CVSA basically writes this criteria to say steer axles is different. And if you weld on a steer axle, it's like they used to have a rule where you were not allowed to run retreads on steer axles. Well, now they allow you to run retreads, but not if you're hauling people. So buses are not allowed to have retreads on the front, and so. These criteria will change, but it takes a long time. These meetings are, uh, you know, a lot of different ideas, a lot of different subjects. And it's funny because our last meeting we talked about um, the next one that I would like to talk about, I service is studs. And they're saying, okay, if you have one broken stud, why don't we take that out of service? Us vendors are all in favor of that. Well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but the fleet guys in the room's like, oh, no, we can have two broken studs, and it's not a, you know, now, you know, like, and you're like, so those are the issues. You know, one broken stud to me, I don't want to have that truck running well, down the there's road. there's a situation in, in place if you've got a broken stud. There's something going on that needs to be looked at. Yes. So, so like, if you go and read the CVSA uh, uh, standard, what it's going to say about studs, it's going to say they're looking for loose, uh, missing, broken, cracked, or stripped studs um, uh, on a 10 fastener system. Uh, if there's three broken, loose, missing, broken, cracked, or stripped, three anywhere on that system, or two adjacent. And if you have an eight fastener system, an eight, eight, eight bolt hole system, it's two anywhere. So, so those are things that at least from a manufacturer, with our understanding of the industry, with our understanding of the way our product works and the way our wheel is held onto that vehicle, we, you know, this is truly, I, I, this is truly an out of service condition. Again, this, I, 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 I really like their terminology, likely to cause a crash or breakdown because once you start seeing that level 
of three, three fasteners anywhere on a 10 stud system or two adjacent on a 10 stud system, you really are in that likely to cause a crash or a breakdown uh, situation. And, and so, but, and that's, that's one that there's obviously, you know, the industry, the, 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 the manufacturing side of CVSA is, is trying to push for something that's going to be a little bit more, uh, more rigorous, but, you know, that's, that's still in negotiations. Well, there's, yeah. there's still that one goes along with the fasteners too, but it really has to do with the wheel. And there's another interesting out of service condition that they will have, and it has to do with the stud holes on disc wheels. I mean, you can get an elongated uh, stud hole, as they call it, and how are you going to get that elongation? Well, obviously something is loose and there's a problem. We talked about that in the last show about the importance of ensuring that you have the proper torque and obviously the tension. When you lose that, and the wheel can start moving, you'll start elongating that hole. And that's a potential for a wheel off. So another very serious safety situation that the CVSA inspector is going to look. And you may have all of the, the studs and all of the nuts in place, but if they can see that you've got elongated bolt holes, you're going to be put out of service as right. well. Right. That's telling them that yeah. there's been, that wheel has been sort of torquing back and forth and, and hitting up against that stud and elongating and, and that that's been you know almost cold worked you know as, oh, yeah, as the as the bolt hits one side and then hits the other side and then hits and then you know you've got this elongated stud that tells it's a that's a very very serious issue um, from our standpoint uh, again the, we keep coming back from the to the manufacturer's recommendations which is the next level up the CVSA is going to be the lowest level. CVSA red tag, I should say, is going to be the lowest level. But if you want to avoid those red tag situations, go to the manufacturer's recommendations, and that will keep you out of the, out of trouble. That'll keep you out of that hot water. Yeah, I mean, rust streaks is something that CVSA inspectors look for. Rust streaks emanating out of the stud holes indicate that they're, they're, there's looseness, so they can violate you for that. And, and people say, well, I didn't paint that wheel or I didn't clean that wheel. Well, they don't know that. They are looking for signs of safety issues and a violation can be rust streaks. And so we'll discuss that at these meetings and it is absolutely true. But you try to tell the fleets, paint your wheel or clean them up or after you fix that because the next violation, that poor inspector doesn't know. He's just looking at trucks saying, yeah, that could be a danger. Yeah, and what's what's the data? Violation. What's the data in front of me? I yes. see rust streaks. I don't know wh when that was done, when it was fixed. You got a problem. Yes, uh, maybe this may be a good point. Uh, and I know most fleets, and obviously good fleets, have a very good pre-trip inspection that they uh, require of the driver or or someone else to do on that vehicle before it goes out on the road. And and all and I think the point for the CVSA is if you're doing your pre-trip inspections you're going to find these situations before that vehicle ever leaves the lot. Because in one, one day of driving or whatever, not one of these situations is just going to automatically occur. Like you were saying, if you've got a three-inch crack, that's been going for a while. And there's a reason why it's been going for a while is because it hasn't been looked at and it should have been taken out of service before that particular wheel should have been taken out of service before it ever got to that point where you got an out-of-service for the, for the truck. Right. Yeah, and, and I'll mention this, and this has always been a subject. What if you have the center caps and stuff on your wheels? Okay, CVS, they have no tools except a tape measure. They have zero tools. They are not there to remove center caps, aerodynamic covers, or anything. So they will not give you a sticker, but the driver of that vehicle can remove those, and then they can inspect them, but the driver is responsible for putting them back on. So, you know, when you first hear these rules, you go, wow, that's no, but that's the only way. They are equipped with a tape measure. Well, you, just, you brought up an interesting, I just got a question for you as we're sitting here. He won't give you a sticker. So they to go to do your inspection, and they can't do a portion. It's like a 37-step inspection they do, if I remember it properly. Uh, if they can't do all of that, then you don't, you don't get, get the, the sticker. sticker. So you could be pulled off down the next place by another DOT or another CVSA inspection, and you're <laughs> going through it all again. No, you could you could so, be in yeah, store for yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, could, you could be on the the regular regular uh, rotation for CVSA. And, and, and 
You know, now, again, this is just at these CVSA meetings. This is kind of one of the better stories I ever heard an inspector say. He basically said this, and he said, after a while, we know which fleets that we are going to get zero violations on. So as we wave trucks through the CVSA inspection site, <laughs> guess which trucks are going to get pulled over? The ones that they've had issues with before. And it's, it's you know, it is the way the world works. That guy doesn't want to do a 37 inspection on a truck that they know they are going to be nothing wrong with. They'd rather do the 37-step inspection on a truck that, hey, we've had trouble before. And they're like, well, they're profiling. No, they kind of understand that there are certain fleets. And and the fleets are proud of it. Like, we've never had a truck red tagged. We've never had a, you know, service violation. They're proud. Those are the great C CSA scores because they have good equipment. Their drivers are great. Those are good things for a fleet, and they're very proud of that, and they should be because they took the step above. They, they, you know, you know, these are the standards that we're going to take your truck off the road. They're saying we're so far above that. If we get a violation as a maintenance director, I need to be, you know, this is a bad mark. And that gets us back to the manufacturer's recommendations. Those, those fleets that are being waved through, they get to save that time. They get to save that money. They get to their, their insurance rates are lower. There's a lot of money that they're and they made a business decision to do that, 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 that uh, maintenance to the manufacturer's recommendations. And it's all about money. It's all about money. Right. Yeah. And, yeah. and so this is and that's it's just smart business to, to really drive to the manufacturer's recommendations. The, uh, the, the, there's a couple other things we, we I want to we're going to be wrapping up real quick. But, you know, on hubs. Uh, there's a couple of things that they have there. When any axle bearing hub cap is missing or broken, allowing an open view into the hub assembly. That is a CVSA red tag situation. Uh, smoking from the wheel hub assembly due to bearing failure is, is another one. Uh, not to be associated with smoke from a dragging brake, which I'm sort of surprised they, they allow that. But that's... That's not for me to comment well, on, I guess. They'll take a look at the brakes. That's an, as, I, as, as you remember, the number, the top three things That's were true. brakes, <laughs> tires and wheels, and brakes. That is true. Yeah. So, and then, uh, then they, they go back to the, uh, the uh, demountables where they have a, the lock or the side ring uh, bent, broken, cracked, and properly se seated spring or mismatched ring. And so there's, and that pretty much wraps it up for, for uh, the CVSA uh, red uh, just, tag. A, just a question for Dave. I mean, you're, you interact with a, a lot of fleets, obviously. In TMC, there's a lot of fleets uh, that come to TMC, it, and there seems to be a lot of engagement with the fleets and CVSA. And, and what's your experience been with the fleets that you go to? I mean, like you said, they, they're proud of what they've done. They're working hard toward keeping it safe on the road. And what would you say to fleets who, who really don't know a whole lot about this right now? Well, you know, the great thing about the world that we live in today, if, if you want to know more, you know, TMC is a great organization to get you started. Um, you know, we write recommended practices for the industry. Um, you know, you don't want to get to the CVSA where you're putting trucks out of service and stuff. Um, you know, each, each manufacturer vendors, we got service manuals. You know, today you can learn anything like, you know, on YouTube videos and, and, you know, TMC's looking now into doing YouTube videos to show the recommended practices of stuff. I mean, the the world is changing at a rapid p pace. Service manuals, you know, we all have service manuals. And they're all and, online now. And they're all online. So, I mean, there's a great amount of information to say, hey, I don't want to be the guy being red tagged. I don't want to be running unsafe equipment. Um, and, and again, the CSA has really put the, the focus. What's your insurance rate? Are you going to be insurable? Are you, as a driver, did you have too many safety violations? You know, when you brought up the pre-trips, the pre-trips are critical. And, you know, to walk around and inspect the, the, the areas of that truck before you get in to drive it. I mean, those are critical. And if it's, if it's not, tell your company, hey, and I noticed this and this and that. Should I drive or should I, where should I take it to get it fixed? So, you know, we all want to have safety. And so 
CVSA is not a bad group of people. They're out there trying to protect your family, my family, and everybody from safety of 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 these. These are big vehicles. <laughs> these are big vehicles. <laughs> these are big, yeah. big vehicles driving yeah. down the road. Well, let's uh, just to wrap up. Uh, you know, some of the things we talked about was uh, wheel cracks, disc wheel cracks of three inches. Uh, if a crack goes between two holes or if there's two or more cracks anywhere on the wheel. Uh, we talked a little bit about fasteners. Uh, if there's three uh, missing, broken, cracks, stripped, or loose fasteners anywhere on a 10-bolt-hole 10 10 wheel uh, or two adjacent. Um, and then if it's an eight-fastener system, if there's two anywhere. Um, uh, we we talk, uh, talked a little bit about stud holes and the elongation when when you have movement, when maybe if you put uh, lubricant on the hub or on the mounting face of the wheel, you're going to get that movement there that we talked about in the first that first episode, and that's going to cause those elongated stud holes. Uh, we talked a little bit about welds and and then some of the the um, the multi piece wheel issues and hubs. So I think that wraps it up. Uh, for this episode of Behind the Wheels. If you'd like to contact us with any questions, comments, or suggestions for future episodes, you can write us at alcoawheels at arconic.com. See you next time. Sponsored by Alcoa Wheels, the global leader in aluminum wheel innovation, manufacturing, and technology. Inventing the first forged aluminum wheel in 1948, its team of experts continue to develop the most lightweight, efficient, and high-performing commercial vehicle aluminum wheel products, bringing you revolutionary innovations like Alcoa Dura Bright Wheels, Alcoa Dura Black Wheels, the new Alcoa Wheels Hubboard Technology, and the lightest truck wheel on the market, Alcoa Ultra One 22 and a half by eight and a quarter wheel. Alcoa Wheels, the global leader in aluminum wheel innovation.